So welcome back to another um, in the uh, in the series here of my built models. Um, if you watched the uh, the first video, you would have seen a bit of an intro, but I'm going to throw this intro onto every video so you guys know what you're looking at. And basically, I'm going to be going over all most of these models behind me. I completed before I had the YouTube channel started, so I'm going to be going through these uh, bit by bit, quick little five minute videos, uh, so you guys can take a look uh, at the videos I've built. I'll talk about the model, uh, what I, uh, some of the issues I had building it, how I I liked or did not like that kit, and then some of the aftermarket if there is any type of resin or, or, or uh, aftermarket decals I used on the kit and then at the very end I'll throw up some pictures of the completed model so you guys can get a good view of what all these look like and what I went into because there has been some interest I've heard from you guys that you do want to see some more of these uh, and not all of them are going to have full up build logs so uh, you know I can't do product reviews I can't do anything on these ones that are built so those are going to be included in these videos so any of this series in this playlist that's what it's going to be so please don't come in here thinking you're going to get a full build log um, but uh, so yeah stay tuned I will eventually have all of these videos done and I'll have them all released so uh, stay tuned um, and uh, as always my name is Sean and this is Sean's Aviation. And just before we get into the video, um, something I should have been doing a lot more up till now, and that is just asking you guys out there, if you enjoy what you're looking at, if you are if you like what I'm doing, go down below, uh, click on the, the like page, subscribe to my, my channel, and uh, by all means, please click on that little notification bell. If uh, that way you guys get, uh, uh, get alerted when I do get more new content up. I usually try to do the what's on my desk uh, monthly update beginning of the month. And I usually try to get a video or a series of videos released um, by the 15th, the middle of the month. So whether that's going to be a uh, tips and tricks video or an aviation history video or my time lapse videos of the previous model builds that I've got done or uh, an air show video or, you know, um, some of my new product review videos I'll be doing. So I'm going to try to get something posted uh, by the middle of the month. So uh, please, if you're enjoying this, subscribe, like and click that notification bell. Let's move on to the video. So here you are back for another one of uh, the, uh, the boat model videos. This particular one, uh, I'm gonna be doing a three-part uh, video series on my uh, Avenger builds, uh, my Grumman Avengers. Um, I have three of those, uh, so this will be video one of three. And in this one, I'll be talking about the uh, probably um, what is the most commonly found Avenger uh, for a, a number of years now on the, on the uh, Hobby shop shelves, and that is the um, the Italeri, uh TBF One C, which is effectively a rebox of the old Accurate Miniatures kit, which for the longest time was easily one of the most um, accurate uh, Avengers on the market. Uh, and so this is my kit. This is my uh, my Italeri, um Sorry, I'm just looking for something while I'm thinking here. My Italeri, um TBF1C Avenger, uh, which is the. Okay, now where did I put my my makeup brush? I'm looking for the brush that I normally use to clean off my models. And for the life of me, I don't remember where where I stashed that. Huh. Well, that sucks. I wanted to brush this off. It's a little little on the dirty, little on the dusty side here. Anyways, um, so yeah, the Italeri TBF1C, it is the early version of the, um, of the Avenger. Um, there's some minor things you can use to track the differences, the main one being um, along the front of the cowling. Uh, if it's got a short cowl flap, it's a, uh, a TBF, uh, an early TBF Avenger. So just for nomenclature, a little bit of history. Uh, TBF, uh, means it was built by Grumman. TB, Torpedo Bomber, F for Grumman, uh, and then 1 being the first um, first variation it built. So the TBF is the Grumman built version, and the early ones did have um, short um, cowl flaps. It only went down partially on the nose. Um, I'll just zoom in here a bit so you can see. It only had short little cowl flaps. It only covered the front half of the... Um, the nose, and then the later versions, including the TBM, which was built by Grumman, TB, uh, Torpedo Bomber, M for Grumman. Uh, Navy had a really weird way of, of, of labeling aircraft. Anyways, they had cow flaps that continued 
all the way down. Just a quick, easy way to tell the difference between a Grumman built, or sorry, an early and a late version of the Avenger. Um, as for telling the difference between a Grumman and a GE a General Motors one, very, very difficult to uh, tell the difference. Uh, but uh, this is an early version one, uh, and it is classified as a TBF, which again, I don't really mean anything in terms of final build. But anyways, I, uh, I've painted it up uh, in the markings here, you can see, of a, a Royal Navy uh, Tarpon, and, and that is the name that the British gave to the Avenger, the Tarpon. Um, the RAF slash the Royal Navy, they ended up doing their own naming system for a number of, of, of these uh, aircraft. Uh, for example, in the, in the Americans, uh, the, the Navy named uh, their aircraft, uh, but early Air Force aircraft didn't have names, and the British gave names to everything. Spit by the hurricane, the, it was just a different way of naming things. So um, the, the U.S. Navy called it the Avenger uh, to avenge the attack on Pearl Harbor. The British called it the uh, Tarpon. Another example is the Wildcat. Uh, the British called them the, um, oh, I just had it and I left it now. Uh, the, wow, Martlet. There we go. The Martlet is what the Wildcat was initially called by the British. Later in the war, uh, the British actually named the Mustang, for example. They came up with the name for the Mustang. Uh, so then later in the war, the British started to adopt uh, the American names just to make things a little easier. So this is a, a British tarpon. It is in the usual uh, Royal Navy Atlantic scheme of dark slate gray and uh, ocean gray over sky. So it has the yellowy green sky color on the bottom. Um, I will have to do the research. I can't remember exactly what unit I, I did this up as. I'm 99% sure I did it up in the markings of a Canadian uh, squadron that flew these in the Atlantic. Uh, in the war. A few minor things I did on this that uh, made it a little different. Um, there is a seat in the middle here. The Americans did not have a seat in the middle. Uh, it was open. Uh, the British added the seat uh, to include the extra crew member. Other than that, this has been built uh, pretty much, actually I say that, but now that I look at it, um, the flaps are photo etch and there is some photo etch in the cockpit. Um, some of the instrument panels and stuff are photo etched. So I did use a bit of photo etch on that. I used the resin seat uh, to put that in the middle. Um, I will put the markings, uh, if I have not yet, up on the screen so you guys can know exactly what unit this was done with. I'm, uh, again, 99% sure that I used um, can mill air decals for this um, to do the Canadian Avenger. It's very hard to find a British Avenger markings. Um, I, I did leave the, uh, oh, I have no idea what that is. I did leave the, uh, the Bombay empty. I didn't put anything in the Bombay. Um, and as you can see, I did do a little bit of weathering on it, uh, make it look like it's been used to dirty and whatnot out in the ocean. So yeah, very, very happy with that. It, uh, it went together really well. These accurate miniatures, they can be finicky in some places. Um, but, uh, at the end of the day, it does go together quite nicely. Lots and lots of detail in there. Uh, it turns out looking amazing. Um, very, very happy with uh, the quality of this build and how it turned out. It looks just, you don't usually see a bit. Oh, that would explain why that prop looks so funky. I did not have a, uh, man, I just keep breaking everything. Looks like I lost the uh, prop shaft. I'll have to make a new prop shaft and put it together. That won't take long. Anyways, um, You don't usually see Avengers in the the British scheme. You see a lot of the post-war uh, British scheme, and you see some from sort of the South Pacific where they were in the uh, in the um, overall dark blue scheme, similar to the U.S. Navy paint schemes. But the uh, the early war temperate sort of Atlantic scheme is a bit of a rarity. So it's one of those. And I wanted to, to do Canadian, and there really wasn't a lot of Canadians who flew um, flew Avengers. Uh, in the Atlantic scheme. So I'll fix this. Uh, you know what? No, I lie. I'm going to do it now just so you guys can watch me put the prop back on while I talk. So the uh, you'll see here there's a couple of other manufacturers I've used uh, for another Avenger and you'll get to see a little bit of difference in it. So uh, one thing you do need to know with this out of the box, it does not have 
folding wings. It does not include uh, the flaps. As I said, I used a photo etch on that. And uh, the bomb bays are a little finicky to get to work properly. And the turret was very difficult to put together properly. Uh, so though they, are, they are a little finicky, as I said, they are a bit of a finicky kit. Uh, so it does take a little bit of effort to get them to line up properly. So the turret was a bit of a, of a hassle. Um, the uh, the uh, um, bomb bays were a little bit of a hassle to get to fit right. Uh, the way that these uh, brackets on the ends and the way that you have to uh, cut and pinch the door to make it work, uh, it has a little bit of a finickiness to it that I don't necessarily like. As I said, the flaps are aftermarket. The wings are non-posable. You can only build them with the wings out. Um, but other than that, good kit, highly recommend it. Um, so that is my 148 scale Italeri, which is also a reboxed Accurate Miniatures TBF One Avenger, painted up in the uh, Royal Navy Atlantic scheme. guys and as always if you are interested in any of the content you see you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site and if you're interested in any of this content uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more thank you very much and see you guys next time